Yo, 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 what is good? I got my drink. I hope y'all do too, because we're about to <laughs> get this started with episode three of Ready to Love, uh, season 10. And this is called Finger Looking Good or something like that. So this is when uh, the first episode singles meet the second episode singles and everybody gets together at Tommy's uh, infamous brunch. And basically, it's just Tommy's little speed dating thing. (laughs) That's what it actually is. And so everybody running around here like chickens with the heads cut off. Uh, We got people lying, (laughs) people getting caught up. That's how it always goes. So uh, Mika is like just slicing mugs like she guillotining these dudes who is like she getting caught up in lies. So we got uh, Jonathan. I guess for some reason he ain't want nobody to know that he was married or have a a ex-wife because he kept saying baby mama. He kept saying he was single parent. He didn't say he was divorced. And he had already messed up. Like, ain't nobody trying to take him serious now because, like, you can't even admit that you was married. Like, what? Why? Like, certain some of this certain stuff that these guys are hiding is like, it don't even make sense. It's just going to make them more suspicious of you. <laughs> so, Mika found out that Jonathan is not married. I mean, is not just a single father, but he's divorced. And yeah, bro, you you messed up with that. And then we got Lamar. (laughs) Lamar is just like how we thought. He's a no nonsense. Like this is what you see is what you get. And him and April almost came in the blows. (laughs) Nah, he is just like, you know, just like he don't want to hear it. And he don't want them asking about his past either. I'm just like, man, why is y'all dudes being so suspect all of a sudden? But I got to say that I was almost dying laughing when uh, you got Chaz talking to uh, Leyland, like basically professing his love to her, talking about he going to give her his only his firstborn and all that. And then when these other ladies walk in, the other singles, <laughs> he like snatch his hand. He turned away from her. He started ignoring her when all the girls came in. Man, but it's in the men's corner this week. So the men have the power to uh, let one of these ladies go. And I wouldn't want that job because that would be such a hard, uh, such a hard uh, thing to do. I wouldn't know who to let go. All of them look good. Like I said, us guys are about the looks, as people know. So that's going to that's going to be hard. But I mean, you got April in here. She's looking better than I initially thought she was. Everybody looks good. And um, you got Vanessa up here. She like being so nice because she knows she almost about to go home. <laughs> she was up on the chopping block. She ain't trying to go home. She telling Will that he's handsome. So I know she really just trying to stay here. Like she is tripping. <laughs> April did. She she had a chip on her shoulder this episode. I mean, when a man got to tell you dismissed, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all bad. I mean, she up here asking questions and demanding answers. It's not like a conversation. So, you know, good for her. Uh, what else happened? Uh, but Chaz, yeah, when Buddy saw Alexis, <laughs> all bets was off. He is like, oh, that's the one right there. Because she's the only one that got her natural, natural hair, like, just out with nothing in it. We got, you know, Koshia. Uh, we had uh, Leyland. You know, uh, April. Like, a lot of these women got their natural hair how he likes it. But I don't know. Um, Alexa just caught his eye. And uh, Leyland was, like, out of the picture, it looked like, after that. All right, so let's really get this started. So first date, we had Jonathan and Alonzo inviting Alexis and uh, Koshia to a bowling alley. So they get their bowl on, the guys against the girls, the girls won, the guys had to do a chicken dance. All right, <laughs> so when they uh, split off into, you know, couples, you know, to get their you know, to get their conversations on. It was some, it was just some weirdness <laughs> about these conversations because Alonzo just, 
he is you can tell this man is not used to speaking to women uh, in their 40s, <laughs> even in their 30s. I think he is really good for younger ladies like, you know, 18 to 25. But anybody, any woman with substance is like this dude is a cornball. He is goofy. <laughs> he don't have no eloquence, no conversation. His conversations just automatically go to jokes and of a sexual nature. And it's just not, you know, one thing it, it put it, it already put a bad taste in Koshia's mouth. Um, I don't think she going to ever, ever uh, like this guy. And then uh, we had um, Jonathan speaking with Alexis. Now, Alexis is really agreeable. She's way different than Koshia. I think the guys are going to like Lexus, not because she's light skinned with the natural hair, but it's just she seemed like just a real agreeable woman. So and it doesn't it doesn't come off as, uh, you know, fake. You know, she comes off as a basic like cool chick. <laughs> so and these dudes is both like some freaky like toe lickers and toe suckers and it seems like every conversation goes to like toes with these dudes. I don't like they are just shooting themselves in the foot. Like I, I, I can't see like these two guys in particular uh, going off to the sunset <laughs> in this show. I just don't see it. I could be wrong. We're only on episode three. So the next date we had uh, Tall Will, William uh, and Lamar. And they invited Patrice and uh, Patrice and Vanessa to this paint thing. I like these little paint things. I do like those. Um, but yeah, this date was kind of it was kind of funny, <laughs> of course, because any any time Lamar is in the mix, like he said, he's just going to let you know he's just going to be 100, which he was, because this whole episode he was <laughs> He was trying to touch and he kissed uh, April on the side, <laughs> side of her, her face. And she was like, whoa, player, what's going on here? Uh, he's up here trying to put his hand, get his hands all over Patrice. <laughs> so he's just not like, yeah. And um, we got William. William seems to be the uh, the gentleman, you know, the upstanding gentleman. Now, see, the thing with William is he actually has tact. So. <laughs> He can talk to these women. He can make a little kind of a light sexual innuendo, but it could be something else. So, you know, he's he's actually doing it right. And I think Patrice 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 is uh, actually looking at him like, "Mm," you know, because she's like, I want to peel him like a banana and all that stuff. So but did anybody else uh, is anybody else feeling Lamar at this moment? I thought Patrice was. No, that was uh, uh, Sh- Sh- Sharina Shahina. But anyway, uh, yeah, he uh, Mika and Lamar. <laughs> these two are going down their list and they're not taking no prisoners like either you in or you out. <laughs> they got they sword just chopping heads off. Lamar is already like Vanessa. It's not for me. <laughs> He's like April is not for me. Mika is not for me. <laughs> he just he is taking this thing like, hey, this is a job. <laughs> and Lord Jesus, like this next date between Laron and Patrice. I'm like, man, I don't know where to start with this one. First of all, they met at this Cajun soul food restaurant and he, you, you know, he He's a little, you know, he's a little pudgy, man. <laughs> and he got there, sat down in the chair. She enters. I don't even think he gave up to give her a hug or acknowledge her. <laughs> she just sat down. He's already sitting there. Uh, they got their food orders. He ain't paying no attention to this woman. This this man is really just focused on this big ass plate of catfish. <laughs> he's, he's like, no, no. Oh, yeah, you know, damn, this catfish is good, baby. <laughs> he is he is like not like he eating the fish with his hands. He's not really talking. She got uh, neck bones, a turkey, <laughs> turkey necks and stuff. I'm like, these are some southern 
Texas folks here. Like, they eating all this soul food. And, like, she is just like, I'm here. Like, you you see me? Like, <laughs> And I can't believe this dude said that he is turned up Wednesday through Sunday. Like, he goes out Wednesday through Sunday and he's trying to lead a life. I see him as a trick. I think he's one of them guys that hangs out in strip clubs Wednesday through Sunday. Like, what is he doing? Like, how is he turning up? I think he turn up at the strip club, stay there, spend a couple of hundred dollars, uh, probably pay for some extra and go home every day just wasting his money. Because I, I can't see him like, why are you out turning up every night looking <laughs> The way you looking. I don't know. Uh, well, he I mean, he just said he's not into Patrice, Patrice, Patrice. And um, I don't know why. I mean, this guy thinks he's kind of guy's gift, I guess. I, I, I'm not I'm not seeing where this is where all this stuff is coming from. I know having confidence is everything. But dang, <laughs> like be realistic. And then we had April and um, Jonathan meeting and April claimed that she want to get some stuff cleared and all this stuff. So she's talking to Jonathan. She seemed to be into Jonathan. I know Jonathan is not into her, (laughs) but uh, I guess she caught on to the fact that he was always talking about his kid, but he was. See, Jonathan always Jonathan and Alonzo, they both are trying to make themselves seem like more wanted than they are <laughs> like they like Jonathan is Jonathan is just suspect like he want like instead of letting it out that maybe he thinks his uh baby mother or his ex-wife wants him because that was another thing he he did not say that he had an ex-wife that he just said he had a baby mama but actually he's divorced and so once these ladies find that out they just not going to take him serious. But, um, uh, you know, he was talking about his, his baby mother, you know, possibly wanting him. And like, why would you say that? Like, that was that's just dumb. That's just stupid to say, because now you want these women to have some insecurity, some insecurity issues with your ex. So if y'all get together, then they're going to be looking at your ex all the time sideways. Like, oh, she's still trying. She still wants you. She still want that old thing back. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jonathan. And when it went, I must have missed the memo, but when did men start wearing pearl necklaces? <laughs> That's, talk about suspect. I mean, I didn't see, this is like the third guy I seen wearing some pearls. This is, this is weird. So, yeah, the uh, motif for this uh, episode is quality time. And that reminds me of uh, when um, Koshina and uh, Alonzo were talking. Oh, no, it was Koshina and Jonathan. And Kosh- uh, Jonathan was like, what is what's her love language? And she was like, quality time. But she couldn't explain what she meant by quality time. <laughs> so weird. And for some reason, Jonathan at his over 30 self can't understand why women want to know about your past relationship. I mean, just say it didn't work out. Uh, we grew apart. I mean, you don't have to get into the whole thing, the details, but trying to trying to stay away from answering the question, trying to filibuster is like he's not going to be a fan favorite. I mean, his looks and everything can only go so far. So I, I'm not seeing him. He, he might he might surprise me, but I'm not seeing him in Alonzo Alaska. <laughs> Blasting the rest of this voyage. One of them probably will, but I don't. I can't see both of them. So the it girls for this episode seem to be Patrice and Alexis, because we had Lamar. I think it was Jonathan. Um, who else was it? Will. Uh, yeah, they was all like Patrice, Patrice. <laughs> so, and you know as well. The not so it girls is Koshina and April, and rightly so. I mean these these, well them, and add Mika in there, but Koshina, Koshia, and April. Man, these are like those are the the, the two women that that got the most mouth that seem like 
they the most of a loose cannon. Like you got to walk on eggshells. Like they ain't, they just not having anything like that. <laughs> so we at the deliberations, and uh, yeah, these are the two on the chopping block. And like I said, I do understand the uh, choice to to put Koshia and April on the chopping block. Koshia is uh, you just got to be direct with her. <laughs> you just got to be direct and be like open because her and April, they they can find some when there's just some deception. It seems like they good at finding that out because they are the two that had maybe the craziest stuff happened to them in a past from what they said so far. I mean, and then Alonzo, of course, he's going to say Koshia because that was a lame ass like conversation he had. Like, oh, I like to throw a curveball. So what if there was a pregnancy scare? Pregnancy scare <laughs> at 40, at 40 something. That doesn't happen <laughs> in your 40s either. You ain't going to be scared. You're going to, you know, have a baby or you're not going to have a baby like nobody's going to be that just you know that uh irresponsible so like i said this dude is just not used to speaking with women he's used to talking to girls or something so anyway we got uh lamar and alonzo gonna deliver the news to the to the girls alonzo has uh koshina koshia and lamar has uh april and man <laughs> I knew as soon as uh, <laughs> Koshia was walking in them hills, going to meet Alonzo, that this wasn't going to go well for Alonzo. First of all, on a date when they was bowling, she was beating the man <laughs> upside the head, like, give me a high five, and smacking him on the head, smacking him on the butt. Um, but she smacked him in this conversation they was having because he's supposed to tell her that she is still uh, ready to love, but she was looking for some feedback. And then she turned it around and was like, you can't have like these sexual innuendos, like these sexual uh, charge questions and expect me to answer it on the first time I'm meeting you. Like she even told him to his face. So I hope like he learned something like she's supposed to learn something from him when they invite you to this uh date after the gentleman's lounge like you supposed to get them feedback on what they can do better he ain't do none of that like she got so pissed like she was just and she was just like appalled that he would call her to this date uh talk about some stuff that they that they talked about that he was totally wrong and then tell her she he thinks that she's still ready to love like he is just not the man for this job <laughs> He just should. He might want to recuse himself of all uh, of all uh, duties uh, of telling women what they should hear. So anyway, April is out. Uh, that didn't go well because, you know, she's a doctor, Ph.D. and all that stuff. So maybe she she might have, you know, put hoisted herself a little too high over the guys. So anyway, she's gone. So now we got eight men and eight ladies. And so that's it for my review and rant of <laughs> Ready to Love uh, Season 10, Episode 3. And I'm going to catch y'all next week for Episode 4. And stay decent, folks. <laughs>